All righty. Today, I am joined by Evasia, the creator of the Noita Arena mod, as well as Noita Online. How are you doing today, Evasia? I'm doing good. Good. We're, we're, we're just going to be casually playing some Noita Arena, and I'm, I'm going to be doing a little QA with Evasia. And, um, yeah, Evasia, if you have anything you want to, like... It, do you want to lead off with anything? What what is the um, the current status of Noita Arena Noita, Noita Online for you? Um, I it's been a bit overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> the so I I didn't expect the amount of people interested in it, honestly. Right. I know I know everyone was like saying that this was gonna be like. A thing that everyone would want, but like, I don't know. Um, I, 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 I it's a bit much. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it's definitely crazy, but I I think that it's a reasonable reaction considering that this game is literally like something that everybody would dream of and think like, man, that could never happen. But it sounds really cool if it did. It's it's one of those. Here we go. So I've got a really pressing question that um, I've been asked over and over in the comment section. You might have already seen it. But um, do you think this technology could be transferred over to a Noita co-op mod? This has been asked in the Discord a ton of times already. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, so nothing is impossible. But that doesn't mean people should get like their hopes up because I'm personally not planning to do it. Right. I don't think I'm ever planning to do it because there's just so much more stuff that you have to like synchronize and like just figure out how to make work in a co -op, like multiplayer environment. Right. But with that being said, Noita Online would be a very strong base to potentially jump off of and work on that if another confident modder wanted to give it a crack. Would that um, be right? I'm not sure. Like, Noita Online by itself is just, it's really bare bones. It essentially doesn't give you anything except for, like, a way to implement networking and, like, a lobby system and stuff. Right. Okay. Like, it's... It lets you create game modes, but it doesn't really give you anything to, like, work with. Like, it doesn't give you a player or anything. Interesting. So, would you say that Noita Online is uh, kind of a... It's it's a similar analog to Noita Together in terms of its framework, except that it's got, like, a different server side and that sort of thing? Um... Mm kind of maybe like so how you can think of it is essentially it's just it's it's just the um the ui that you see when you start a new game mm -hmm. where you can pick a lobby and stuff and create lobbies that's part of noise online and like um it's essentially just it's it just gives you like a file that you can add into with new mods to like actually set up um networked game modes right by itself okay. it's just it's just empty it doesn't you can't do anything with it yeah until so it's... a game was actually built on top of it gotcha so it, it but... really is just like a, a the, the framework for uh, whatever whatever other game mode you want to build yeah is it you can essentially think of it the same way as like you know, in Noita, how you can make game mode mods, and they show up in that list there. Yep. That's a, it's essentially that. It doesn't really do anything besides give you a way to get in to get started off, so that I you don't have you. to implement the actual framework behind the networking. Very cool. Um, so I, I guess what else would be a good question? There, there's, there's like a million different questions I have to ask, but I, I guess we'll, we'll like alternate between like coding based stuff and more like balanced based stuff because obviously Noita Arena is, um, an absolute monster to balance because this game was never intended for a multiplayer. <clears throat> uh, so do you think that, uh, 
there is is there like an ideal balanced version of Noita Arena in your head? Um, I don't think I want to make an ideal. Oh, my mount isn't working as intended. I don't think uh -oh. I want to make an ideal version. Right. Because essentially, what I want to do is I want to just have a ton of lobby settings so that people can build their own ideal version. Right. Okay. Like that makes sense. Everything that people suggested, I want to put all of that besides behind like a lobby setting system. That makes a lot of sense to me as well. Because a lot of people might just want to play like sandboxy noita where they can just do whatever they want, as opposed to like having a like competitive environment, essentially. Right. Yeah. And uh, I think that that's very much a thing to consider is that. We we don't need to make this the the next big esport, but if people want to, you know, it's it's nice to make uh make that available as an option, obviously. Yeah, and that's why when I add like more lobby settings, I want to add like a preset system so that people can share it and save lobby presets. Yeah, Things that like that. that makes a ton of sense to me as well. H having the ability to just like share. Uh, a lobby setting that you like is is really good and that'll be really nice if you're like organizing a tournament for example and you want to mm -hmm. just uh, be like oh why we're, we're playing with this rule set and then you just have like a copy paste that would be amazing yeah and like another thing about that is essentially when you have a when when we get to the point where there's a ton of different options then people can use that to like basically make their own quote-unquote game modes right in arena and then i i plan to like have certain if if people if there's like common like setups that people use i could just bake them into the game as like a preset that you can just click yeah that would be really cute or cool um oh man there, there's so many different ways that you you could do like a lot of that so i i've, I've been thinking about like um, you know, even being able to manipulate things like gravity or, or like player knockback and you know about the, the Super Smash Brothers mode, but I suppose for, for anybody who hasn't heard about that, um, one of my ideas, I'm, I'm not sure if it'll be implemented or not, but basically it, it is like, basically you get scaling knockback and Evasia's idea on how to do it would be to, um, basically your health bar as it goes down, you are influenced by more and more knockback um, up up until you hit zero, which then you have crazy knockback. Uh, you get sent flying, and if you get knocked out of the arena, you lose. As opposed yeah. to the um, the normal style, where it's just like if you lose your HP, you lose. I do think that's a really fun idea. I I actually did write it down oh, as nice. something that I might look into at some point. Yeah, so I, I guess that leads naturally into uh, another question of uh, what kind of other game modes do you have planned? This is Noita Arena with Noita Online. What other things do you have planned for, for Noita Online? Um, Noita Online, the things that I have in the works are a golf mode. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen it before. Uh, I, I've heard of it, and I, I can close my eyes and imagine it very clearly, it's, and I'm, I'm excited for it. It's like a getting over it style mode where you control a golf ball in like the, the same way that you would control it in like things like golf with your friends. And right. Those kind of games, but like 2D, obviously. Um, and it's the maps would be procedurally generated so that Unlimited I don't have golf. to design <laughs> maps and it can be replayable and stuff. Yeah, that sounds really cool. It's the, the framework behind it is entirely done. It's essentially just uh, for that. I just need map chunks and I don't like making maps. So. <laughs> Yeah, and so I I guess if there's any map makers out there, um, feel free to join the the Discord link down below to Noita Online. Go ahead and get in contact with Avasia for that. Um, okay, so speaking of maps, right now there's only one map in Noita Arena. Um, how do you intend on bolstering that pool? 
Uh, I have people working on new maps right now. Mm -hmm. um, there's some people working on like closed off maps where you then where it's like um, an entirely closed off environment. Um, yeah, essentially what I'm just what I'm planning is to have either have an option to either have it like um, pick a random map every time you enter the arena or to have it where when you ready up, you get to vote for a map. Right. Out so of like it, three maps, essentially. Would that mean that each round would be played on a different map or do you think like a full set um, should be played on a single map? That's probably going to be an option as well. Like okay. either or. Oh, man. I could imagine in, like, a more competitive setting, you could have it where, um, like, if, for example, in a teams or one versus one setting, you could have it where the, the loser gets a counter pick. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could even have, like, the rock, paper, scissors to, to like, pick, pick who picks the map first. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of interesting ways to, to go about that sort of thing. Um, let's see, what what else? We we've we've gone over balance and maps and, and different projects. Uh it, what, what was the most difficult thing when when creating uh th this mod set? Um like arena yeah no no to arena no to online um the most difficult thing honestly getting the like steam stuff working probably oh that was close yeah getting the steam to, stuff working like a lot of this the actual difficult things were not like written by me. Like uh, there's some um, this framework behind it written right. in C plus plus, which like there's a, there's a bunch of like custom API stuff outside that isn't normally possible. That's written by Dexter, um, assisting Cloud Noita patcher that he wrote. That's just mm -hmm. every time I like needed something that couldn't be done in the default API, I would basically just go to him because he's he's been like reverse engineering the Noita engine. Wow, that's really cool. So like if there was a, an issue that couldn't be solved by me, I would just <laughs> essentially go to him. That, that seems I mean, the, if you've got the resource, that's amazing. So so big shout out to Dexter in that case. That's amazing. He's it's been massively helpful in that regard. Yeah, there, there's quite a few different things Dexter's been working on as well. I know his uh, component manager has been really, really cool to work with lately. It's super useful for debugging as well. Yeah, and it's it's got like the cleanest UI I've ever seen in a Noita mod by like a country mile. It's insane. That's because it that's because it doesn't use the Noita UI. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. <sighs> But yeah, I, I guess that that comes up uh, with another question. Um, what do you think the limit to to Noita modding is? Honestly, there isn't one. <laughs> really? Like, okay, the if you if you're talking purely about mods that like can be uploaded to Steam Workshop that are quote unquote safe. Mm -hmm. then sure there's limits you can't do things like this where you have to network things or make do anything outside of what the devs added to the api but if you're talking about like unsafe mods essentially the, the sky's your limit if you know how to reverse engineer which is not fun to do with c plus plus right the noise i've written in um then you can do anything because you can just do memory editing stuff and that's like pretty wild add custom api stuff that 
it's not intended normally. <laughs> we can we can finally make the 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 Noita Bitcoin oh. miner we've always asked for. <laughs> <laughs> like if pe people like Dexter has gotten net hack running in noita so <laughs> that's so cool right i forgot about that I've, I've been meaning that that was how i was planning on first consuming that hack actually was through that mod i gotta go give that a try that that means that doom must be runnable in in noita as well right sure <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny but yeah it things are things are not easy if I say that anything is possible, it doesn't mean that someone it's... could just easily make like a multiplayer mod or things like that. Right. But if you take enough time and you understand how the engine works well enough, I don't really think there is limits. That's really, really cool. So in, in terms of pushing those limits, uh, did, were there any like hard limits that you had to deal with? Or um, that, I guess like that's when you turn to Dexter, right? Is is when mm. you hit those those super hard limits. Yeah, um, an issue I was running into a lot was with the gun system. It's it's so like it it's really hard to modify how the gun system behaves because right. half of it is just is hard coded into the engine. Um. And the gun system is, uh, for anybody not not in the know, is like basically the the wands and all yeah, that sort of thing. The right? wands are called guns in the game. Yeah, <laughs> in the cut. Um, pretty interesting. Makes you wonder what kind yeah. of game we could have ended up with if they uh, didn't go with the magic motif. I tend to use a lot of like um, developer words, like. Oh, I, I think that's fine. I, I think it's pretty cool because it, it really gives a, a little peek behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a difficult thing. Um, what else? Just anything like RNG related. Yeah, so mm -hmm. anything that, that would be like really particularly <laughs> difficult to sync. Um... Oh, I'm getting killed there. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's class cannon. <laughs> oh man, yeah, we've, we've got a little bit of a power differential at this point. Let's see if I can make it come back. Oh man, yeah, the, the, this game mode is just so much fun. If, if anybody hasn't tried it yet, uh, there, like I said, there's gonna be a link to the Discord, and you'll be able to get a hold of it there. And uh, yeah, obviously, I highly recommend. I had like a couple more questions, but I got blown up so hard I forgot. <laughs> I have a million things on my Trello. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man. Is is that uh, open to for, for people to see? It is. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I'll flash that on screen here for everybody to see. That would be awesome. I mean, people can have a, an idea of what is to come. Yeah, but if you like. I want to t talk about things I've, I'm working on right now in relation to Arena and stuff that I got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the power swings back and forth in this game are really interesting. So I, I guess that's um, that's a, a, a good question. In terms of, like, we, we talked about balance earlier for, like, the future, but balance in the now. How, how did you arrive at, um, you know, losers don't get a perk, winners do get a perk? And um, th then it's just mostly all about the wand building. Um, that was how it started, honestly, because it the game was, the idea was based on the game rounds, which right. essentially does the same thing. You get to pick like a perk when you lose. Um, and I, I originally I never really intended to like reward the winner because it like i don't know it, it it's really difficult to balance if you do that yeah especially in a game like noita where you can snowball so hard like even yeah. in the base game if you get like a decent wand it's just like the the rich get richer people always so, ask oh sorry one thing um one way i'm planning to like balance this even more with the losers getting perks is to have perks for 
every resistance type and have like um, perks if you, if you take more damage to explosions to have the resist the explosion resistant perk to come up more often and if you take more damage to slice have a slice resistance perk come up more often wow that sounds super That's handy I think that would be a, one way to like slow down the power trip yeah uh the, so that that brings up another good question of um so the, there is definitely like a a potent meta in this game that tends to centralize around like just instantly killing your opponent but i've also found that there are like a couple of spells that can break open like a defense meta um do you want to encourage a more <laughs> offensive or defensive playstyle um, I honestly, I, I just want a place, like, I just want matches to last longer, because a lot of people have said, basically everyone has said that they prefer the, like, early game where you have to, like, actually dodge and things. And yeah, I feel I, like the very first round, if it's, like, Spark Bolt versus Spark Bolt, it is a really high skill cap round. Yeah, and a lot of people have said they prefer that kind of thing. At least the first like three rounds. Um, I don't. I I personally do too. I think matches just need to last longer. I think one shots is just not great for like. It's just not a lot of fun to me personally. Yeah, it's like you get to flex your amazing wand building skill, but you're you're just hanging out in the holy mountain tinkering and not actually, you know, getting out in there out there punching people in the face for very long. It's one of those things. It's it's very yeah, tricky it's, to balance. It's also just it's just not fun if you like enter the game and instantly die without even being able to shoot your wands. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's definitely one of those things where I I've been trying to. In my head, there, there's like three different stages. There's an early game where you have nothing or almost nothing. And like that that tends to be pretty fun unless somebody gets lucky and gets something really crazy like a freeze charge. And uh, then there's like the mid game <clears throat> where you do have some stuff, but it's all like kind of mediocre. And you have to cobble together something really cool. Like for example... I yeah. find buoyancy is really, really effective in the mid game because you can just grab people and pull them out of the arena from afar, which is pretty fun. Um, and then there's the the end game where people are just trying to ra rather than trying to make like the top DPS wand, they're just trying to fill up the screen with as many like damaging things as possible. Yeah, there's there's been a lot of solutions suggested to this issue, but. None of them are really perfect, but I think most of them would be fun to add to the game. Like, um, one of them was that to make, to have an option where spells, individual spell cards decay over time. So you can only use them for a set amount of rounds. Right. That would be an I interesting solution. Which I think was solution. a cool idea. Um, another was it's probably a separate game mode where you would just like have to build new ones every every holy mountain and you would get like a wand and a spell shop in that case i think i would have a lot of fun with that and that that sounds like a pretty interesting way of going about it as well yeah i think a, a big problem right now with the game mode is that people will just use the same ones for many rounds yeah well it tends to be easier to iterate upon a single one than it is to like pivot to a whole new build especially when you're winning uh, it, it, the incentive to change isn't really there. Um, like, for example, even, even like last round of this round, I had no improvement to make to my wand uh, because I, I, I was just outside of the price range of buying any of the, the wands in here. Not to mention yeah. none of these wands would really benefit my current build, so uh, I here I am. I still have that issue right now. I'm using the exact same ones again because I couldn't get anything better. Yeah, economy is, is definitely like a a challenging part of this. <clears throat> That's for certain. <laughs> We're just firing massive explosions at each other. This is... Oh, man. It's, it, it, this is like gotta be one of the stronger spells in the game, right? 
for early oh, game. Oh yeah, this is like this is probably the strongest spell that you can get in the first early mountain. Oh, got me. You got a little. <clears throat> pardon me. You got a little bit of superior range thanks to that. Um, the uh, the the glass cannon, <laughs> <laughs> of all things. Uh, is is there anything in particular that you wanted to talk about that that we haven't already yet? Um. Okay. That was a close that was one. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you asked me earlier about other game modes. Mm -hmm. The Bomberman is another one. Right. Oh man. Do you, do you want to show like a little clip of that? Sure. Um Yeah, I have a clip somewhere. <laughs> well, well, it's fine. I I can just edit yeah. it into the video. Future future me can get it. But yeah, that it's I saw a little bit of it. It looks really cool. And you you're planning on adding in all the the classic Bomberman tech, right? It's it's going to be a full thing. Yeah, all the power-ups are already implemented. I, I, have you considered as, notifying it in any way? Um, I don't know. Like, I don't really know how to notify it, honestly. Um, it, it's it's essentially just meant to be like a example game mode for the framework. Right. Okay. Which can be fully played. These rounds are getting explosive. That's <laughs> yes. for certain. Um, yeah, right now I don't really have plans to make it more noita, besides that it's like Mina. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that, that's pretty good. That's a good start. Noita has nice explosions, I guess. <laughs> That is true. Noita does have nice explosions. I was thinking um, maybe you could do like some of the the pixel generation where like individual pieces could uh, could blow up and stuff rather than having I, the whole thing explode. I don't think I want to because it's, it's the Noita explosions are actually like really janky in the way they like <laughs> detect what to blow up. Right. It's all just destroy a lot of half pixels and make it really hard to traverse the level. Noted. Right now I have like, I have the explosions basically like manually programmed in, in like a grid based system like Bomberman. Gotcha. Oh man, I, I think I might have you on this round. I've got a really funny wand build. So we we were talking about like offense and defense meta earlier. This is like the the peak defense wand, I think. But um, in terms of defensive spells, uh, there there's like a bunch of really fun ones. Spells to Giga Saw Blades is really funny. My um, favorite is um, just putting explosive detonator on a teleport wand. Yes, yeah, that that can really bully people. It can shut down a lot of builds. Yeah, also, um, Spells to Black Holes was fun because it just deletes the entire arena when people start shooting. Yeah, and, and it, like, can veer away shots oh, as well. Uh-oh. Well, I won that round. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let, let's see if we can get back in and keep all your stuff. I lost my stuff. Oh, no. Okay, it's... it's we'll just... To start a new one. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll start a fresh round. I wanted to show off my funny... Perfect machine gun detonate wand. It was perfect. <laughs> All right, and we're back with another round. Uh, good luck. <laughs> so. Thank you. Yeah. So w w one of the things that uh, you were wanting to talk about is uh, like planned features for future updates. Ooh, would you give us like a rundown on that? Yeah. So basically, most of the features and ideas are uh, suggested by the community. Like if people want, if people have ideas, they're always free to put them in the feedback channel on the Discord. Um, yeah, so things I'm working on right now for the next updates. Um, I actually have a 
list. Oh, nice. I have, a, I have like patch notes on the Trello as well. Um, so there's smaller things like the um, improved mods list, so people can click on non, like non Steam Workshop mods to directly go to the download page and install them. If the mod supports that, but I hope that most mods will eventually. Right. Um, there's showing like the Twitch integration is enabled, but that's like, that was just a improvement because right now you can't, and people can use that to cheat. <laughs> I can imagine that would be a little bit crazy. Yeah, because currently you can, you can check for uh, the various uh, other uh, potential mods that people could run, but uh, I suppose that one's like just manually in. Yeah. Um, there's the. I'm making the Holy Mountain entirely indestructible. Right, rather than just um, mostly indestructible. Yeah, so the reason for that is mainly for the spectator mode that I'm adding. Which I'm very excited for. Um, being able to spectate people in their holy mountain, it would not work very well if they could destroy the holy mountain since I can't really synchronize those damaged pixels up. Right. When you're switching between players. Um, that's honestly the main reason. I'm planning to add like drains into the holy mountain so that if you fill it up with liquid, it'll slowly drain. <laughs> yeah. Um, Makes sense. I added a... This is more of a technical thing, but that I added a system to so I can have pop-ups in the same way that when you start a new game, it, may, it asks you if you're sure you want to start a new game. Um, that's mainly for if you click on a mod to go to their download page to make sure that you're not clicking on some like something that could be bad right? and accidentally opening it. That, that's and, like, very when, reasonable. When there's updates available and stuff, there'll probably be pop-ups as well. Um, I implemented a completely new chat system um, because the current chat system is kind of meh. It's <laughs> a bit difficult to type because you have to hover over it to type and you can't like use the arrow to go back and forth when you're typing to edit things and all that. Right. Yeah, so it's um, a little jank, but it, it, honestly, the fact that we've even got a chat system is funny. <laughs> It's essentially like uh, I the the chat box is just a default Noita UI element. Yep. Um, I've just re-implemented that element myself. That's so strange that they originally had that in the game. I wonder what they were using that for. Oh, it's really easy to find out. Um, if you go to options and go to streaming, mm -hmm. you can see one right there. Oh wait, they they were going to have it as like a. It's so um, like it's, a, a Twitch chat converter sort of thing, or no? It's just that the, 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 the I'm talking about the input. Oh, for the input, right? Text the input. It's um, uh, the only reason they added the text input was to type your username. That's why it's so limited because oh, they don't need much out of it. That makes sense. Okay. Because they they never added any of any of the UI stuff that most have access to. They only added things that they needed. I gotcha. Well, hopefully, Which makes sense. yeah, it, it does. Hopefully, in the future, because the the Noita devs have come back once and give us a given us a tiny amount of hope. You know, if, if they feel like it, you know, it, you know, it's, it's not it's not necessary. We're fine. We we got this. But like, if they, if they want to add like more UI stuff and like more more options for modding, I feel like that would be where their time is best spent for sure. My um. My most wanted modding thing, modding thing will always mm -hmm. be a um, proper inputs API because right now there's no way to create custom key bindings and stuff like that for mods. Yeah, yeah. Having having like a custom key bind would would be very nice. There's so many different like wacky, cool tools that people make, and I imagine having custom key binds would enable even more. Yeah, it would make it would make it way easier to do custom 
game mode types as well. Because right now you're just limited to the keys that are defaultly set up on the player. Right. Like it's essentially just kick, shoots, right click, WASD, space, um, interact. <laughs> yeah, and then all the, the weird like techie stuff where you just combine a bunch of inputs together to make crazy stuff happen. Yeah. The game is not being nice to me right now. Oh. There's not many options. So, um, other than that, things I'm working on this spectator system, obviously. Um, just having a spectator mode where you can spectate people in their holy mountain and stuff. I think some people will like that. It's a very specific need. Yeah, it's very much the sort of thing where it's like, I'm, I'm sure, like, streamers, for example, will get really good use out of it. Or... Yeah, but even even then, it's like a bit because I, if you're doing like a streamer tournaments, you already got their POVs if they're all playing. Yeah, but if if you're running like um, a personal tournament with like viewers, yeah. I, th I think that's then when it, it becomes be quite lot... helpful. Yeah, it would be. This is this this fight's getting close. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's getting as close as you think. <laughs> it, 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 I mean, w physically, we were close in the battle. <laughs> the, 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 the fight wasn't that close. <laughs> um, yeah, the other things for that I want to have in the next update is wind conditions. Right, which makes a ton of sense. Because... Yeah, people have been asking for that a lot, and I think it's one of the main things that would be nice to have. Yeah. I, I guess uh, well, that that brings up a really good question. So, I, I mean, I think a big part of getting a win condition into the game would be helping people avoid, like, burnout and that sort of thing. Are you concerned that people are just going to stop playing this game mode at some point? Um, I don't know. I, I, the main thing I am concerned with is having people burn out before I actually get the game out to a point where I'm happy with releasing it. Right. Because right now I'm essentially like, if it was up to me, I wouldn't even recommend people to play it in its current state. I know it's a lot of fun and stuff, but it's. For for me personally, it's it's very unfinished. Right. It's as bare bones as it could possibly be. But that said, it is quite functional at the same time, and yeah, I think it's that's a lot why of fun, so many obviously, people, obviously, with friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know. I I have so much plans in the future. That's. I'm. I just want to give people the best experience. <laughs> right. I mean that that's very noble. That's awesome. I'm I'm hoping that uh, you know, any anybody who does somehow manage to burn themselves out on it will will definitely come back and play some more then because it's it's one of those things where it it it's hard to like I'm sure as like a mod maker, you, you don't get to just like say, uh, hey, we did an update and Oh, that's a that's a chainsaw wand. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of damage. Oh man, oh, how am I gonna deal with that? <laughs> Just stay far away. <laughs> True, I guess. Oh, does that mean it was boomerang and not bounce? Yes. Okay, noted. It can be played around. I should not have said. I should not have told you that. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, other things would be um, a end of round period. People wanted like a countdown or something at the end of the round before going into the arena so that people can see like the body flop to the ground and stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, like a kill cam, that sort of thing yeah. would be really cool. Well, one of the things that I've been kind of hoping for is like a, a little stat screen where it's like, oh yeah, here's how well you did. Uh, that's freezing. Oh. <laughs> 
good luck. Good luck surviving that. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, stat screen like, like a kill that kind of thing. Yeah. Or, um. Yeah. So the issue right now is that Noita is not great at tracking who killed someone. <laughs> right. I, I think even Noita... stuff like um, dealing damage, like damage dealt over the course of the round would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know why Noita has been so bad at, like, figuring out who killed someone and, like, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I'm just using, like, the things that the game gives me for that. I'm not figuring out itself. Yeah, it is very peculiar. It, it raises a lot of questions as to, like, how, how do they make sure we have pacifist rounds and stuff. Yeah, so the... The kills thing... I don't know, like, what... If it's the last person that deals damage or something, or... I don't think that's even the case because sometimes it's just straight wrong. Right. The only reason that's that whole system exists is because Noita keeps track of like enemies who killed you and who enemies that you killed and stuff. Oh, There's like right. an entire yeah, the, stats file for the that little archive, I recall. Um Yeah. There's I, I, like, I don't know how it works internally, so I couldn't really say what's wrong with it. Mm hmm Well, I, I think we've covered quite a lot. Like, uh, there, there, there's just been, like, so much to, to talk <laughs> about. Um, is, is there any, like, I'm trying to think if there's any, like, super specific question that I should be going over. I, I guess, you know what we could do? We could cut this one at this point here and uh if you have any more questions that's right you in the in the comments section uh you know just just write a little question up and uh you know we'll either make another video at some point or or maybe a video we'll, we'll just camp out in the comments at some point see what people are saying um but yeah if, Asia, um, if, you, if you've got any other things that you want to talk about I'm, I'm game for as many rounds as you like yeah. I have a thing that I would like to mention. Mm -hmm. um, for the next update, I'm planning to add localization support for different languages, mainly because the Chinese community asks for it. Right. Um, they find, they've been writing their own version of the mod, and I was like, let, maybe, maybe let me do that, because it'll be hell to keep that up to date <laughs> every time I update the mods. Right. Um, so if... I need, I essentially need people to, for translations, people who want to translate things about the mods. Well, there you go. If, if you speak a non-English language and you're interested in contributing to this amazing set of mods, um, you know, once again, the, the Discord is in the link down below in the, in the uh, description. actually find the languages. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll put uh, them up on screen here. Languages are Russian, Portuguese, Spanish, German, French, Italian, Polish, um, Japanese, and Korean. Awesome. Well, well, there you go. Noita is is most certainly a very diverse community, and I, I really like that. So, yeah, if you speak any of those languages, please make sure you reach out to Avasia to help with some translation. That would be super helpful. And um, yeah, I, I guess we'll we'll just call it here then. Is that is that good? Um, yeah, sure. Awesome. Well, well, well thank you, Avaja, so much for letting us pick your brain. Uh, I had a lot of fun, and uh, I hope you did too. Yeah, good. of course. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. All right. Um, if you enjoyed this, uh, you know, subscribe. I guess if you want, make sure you comment on. Uh, if, if you got any questions for Avasia, fi fire that away down below. I'll, I'll find some way to, to find the answer. And um, yeah, that that's all. Thank you for watching.